In this video, I'd like to give you an introduction to structure equation modeling. Um, so, um, I believe many of you are familiar with multiple regression analysis, um, but for those who may not have heard or may not remember what I mean by multiple regression analysis, first let me show you this model. So this is one of the most commonly used methods, I mean models that you may see in social sciences. You have several factors, um, and I name them here as IV1, IV2, and IV3, or independent variables 1, 2, and 3. And using these three factors, I want to predict a dependent variable, right? So, uh, in this model, I have three independent variables and one dependent variable. The dependent variable can be satisfaction, customer satisfaction, quality of life, or um, any other factor. And this means in this model, as you can see, there are some single-headed arrows. Um, this means I want to uh, predict, this means these three variables impact this dependent variable. So there are three variables in my model that impact the dependent variable. So changing these three independent variables will make changes in the dependent variable. And um, to test this model, we can use regression analysis. So multiple regression analysis is used when you have more than one independent variable or more than one predictor in your model. And um, using multiple regression analysis, you will understand that uh, you can predict the dependent variable using these three independent variables. So you understand whether uh, these three has, uh, have a positive or negative impact on the dependent variable and whether these uh, factors are significant predictors of the dependent variable. Okay, this is not uh, in the scope of this um, course. But uh, I just want to link structure equation modeling to regression analysis. So, uh, um, how to test this model? Yes, multiple regression analysis. And uh, I, as I said, I believe many of you are familiar with this method. But multiple regression analysis has some limitations, right? For example, number one you can have only one dependent variable in your model, right? Um, like what I have here, I have only one dependent variable. So there is no issue if you have a model like this, why not? We can use maybe multiple regression analysis. But these days, many of the models that we use, they have several dependent variables. In this example, I'm showing you a model that I have two dependent variables. So I want to predict two factors using the independent variables uh, and using multiple regression analysis you can have one dependent variable so as you know most of the models these days they have more than one dependent variable so this is one of the challenges and another issue is in regression analysis each variable can play only one role what which roles i'm referring to independent or dependent variable. So here, for example, this variable, this one, and this one, these three are independent variables in the model, and this one is the dependent variable in the model. So, um, what is the issue? There are many models that one variable may play both roles at the same time. For example, here, look at this, the M. This is an independent variable for DV, because it's predicting the dv, you see the arrow here, the single-headed arrow. It means m is impacting, has an impact on dv, right? So this m is an independent variable for dv, at the same time is a dependent variable for these three factors. So it's playing both roles at the same time. And if you want to use multiple regression analysis, you cannot just um, simply use it and test the whole model in one shot. So what I'm saying is, so these days there are many uh, models like this one or this one or maybe a combination of these two models. Means you may have several dependent variables, you may have some variables that play both roles of independent and dependent variables at the same time and it's not easy to um, use multiple regression analysis to analyze these models. I'm not saying it is impossible, no. I'm just saying it is difficult, right? It's hard. And you need to run the test several times. So as I said, you cannot just test a whole model uh, in one shot. 
and this is not good in statistics because you are in um, the, each test has its own type 1 and type 2 error so multiple tests means more type 1 type 2 errors and at the end when you test the model for example you if you want to test this model you may split it into two models one is this tree and this one and then this m with dv then you need to run the model let's say in this example let's assume twice right and then how to combine these results i mean the results of these two tests not easy right so uh, these are the shortcomings of multiple regression analysis and this is the reason that we have path analysis so path analysis is an extension of regression analysis and we won't have those we address actually we, we already we address the limitations that we discussed in multiple regression analysis this means in path analysis you can have several um, dependent variables or each variable can play several roles i mean more um, both roles of independent and dependent variables so now why we don't why do we need structure equation modeling so path analysis is an extension of regression analysis the limitations that I mentioned have been addressed, so you can easily use path analysis uh, to address those limitations, to overcome the limitations I mentioned. However, structure equation modeling is an extension of path analysis. This means it has all advantages of path analysis plus something very important. What is it? You can have latent constructs, you can have latent variables. What do we mean by latent variables? In social science research, we have two types of variables. We have uh, observed variables and latent variables. So what is what do we mean by observed variable? Observed variables are those that you can measure them directly. Like my salary. My salary, let's say, is $10,000 or 10,000 ringgit in Malaysia per month. So very easy to measure it. Or you can measure my height, right? My height is, let's say, uh, 1.8 meters, right? Or my weight. We just use a bathroom scale and you just read it, right? Uh, it's my weight, right? Let's say 75 kg, right? So, uh, you can measure them using some instruments directly, observed variables. However, there are so many variables in social science research that you cannot measure them directly like satisfaction, like quality of life, intention to do something, motivation, um, service quality. So all these variables are just some constructs and you cannot measure you. There's no instrument I connect it to your brain and read your, um, let's say, quality of life, right? So um, how to measure them? we use a latent variables or latent constructs or constructs so all these terms have been used in different textbooks or papers and all referring they, they all refer to the same thing that we are discussing so how to measure latent variables for latent variables for example how do you measure customer satisfaction you may use a questionnaire you may use a questionnaire right and in the questionnaire there may be five six seven items asking some questions that all address all are about customer satisfaction right so we measure latent constructs indirectly right using these sort of instruments that we develop right and in most cases it's a questionnaire survey right we just prepare a set of questions and we ask um, respondents and this, using this way we measure the latent constructs in most cases and a in a structure equation modeling, we can have latent constructs. So in regression analysis or path analysis, uh, we have this limitation, right? It means we can have only observed variables. Now you may ask, okay, I have seen many papers that they measured customer satisfaction, let's say, one of those latent variables or latent constructs, and tested it using multiple regression analysis or path analysis. Yes. But what they did was they measured constructs using several items. Then they converted those items into an observed variable and then uh, use the test, use regression analysis. In structure equation modeling, we don't do it. So in those studies, they, in reg they use regression analysis for constructs uh, to test con relationship between constructs. 
they converted in observed variables. For example, they computed the average, the mean of the score to five questions that they asked from respondents to measure their satisfaction. They just computed the mean of the responses to those questions. And then um, it means they, and then they use that mean, which, which can be like, we, we can assume is an observed variable. So we assume, okay, this is an observed variable and I measured it directly, then put it in there. Uh, regression model. Even if you check SPSS, for example, SPSS software, um, you see that when you go for regression analysis, there is only, um, for, for, I mean, for the variables, you know, there is only, for each variable, you have only one field, right? For example, um, you cannot put several items for each construct when you want to test regression analysis. If for satisfaction, you can have only one variable and we assume that is observed variable, how we computed it by computing the mean of the items. So anyway, I don't want to make it very complicated. Um, just um, let me summarize what I mean here. So uh, structure in a structure equation modeling, so this is what you need to understand from this uh, part of my discussion. In structure equation modeling, you, uh, can have um, a model with uh, several dependent variables and each variable can play both roles of independent and dependent, dependent variable. And in a structure equation modeling, you can have latent variables or constructs, latent constructs, right? And constructs means those that we measure indirectly, right? The concepts that we can measure them directly. Now, uh, there's a term here I have mentioned, path diagram. What do we mean by path diagram? Um, it's a diagram that I will later show you. It's just a term um, that um, the, the path diagram shows the linkage, the relationship between the uh, variables in your model and we show how you measure those variables. I will show you some examples later.